let us l return to the linear state space model that we have up here. Everything here is supposed to be known as well. And what we looked at previously is the common filter where we have initial values for mean value, initial variance, and thereby we also get an initial variance of the observations delivered for the states. And then we have the reconstruction and we have the prediction step. And then we iterate these one at a time. Now, what happens if an observation is missing? Let's just go through and see what happens when we look at the prediction step here. Well, you're basically just predicting based on things that you always know. The only place where the observation goes into the equation is exactly here. So what happens if we don't have yt? We talked about it. The common gain is how much should I believe about in the observation as opposed to my previous estimate. Now, if you don't get an observation, you cannot believe in it. So consider it infinite variance. So if you have infinite variance, your sigma yy is infinite. When you divide by an infinite number, the result is zero. So basically, you have a zero here on something that is unknown. So that cancels out, which means that what you do effectively is that you say that I just used my previous estimate as my reconstructed estimate, because it did not get any further information. That also means that the reduction in variance that we will get down here should disappear, and it does because the common gain is effectively zero. If we use that way that we say that the observation noise is infinite. So that's what's going to happen. Now, how does that work out in practice? I would like to just show you an example, just first focusing on the initialization, but then also looking at what happens when you do not have all those observations. So let's go back to the falling body example that we looked at previously, and I'll just simulate. It's the same simulation as I've shown before. Let's just plot it here. First, oh, let's just go back. So what we have here is the height above ground, and then we have time here, and then we have the black line is the state, and then the red is the observations that we get. So we will look at using a common filter. I won't disclose my implementation, but it has all these arguments here. And if we just scroll down a little bit in the script, then y is a matrix with one observation with one observation per row. We have the usual matrices that we use. And then we may have an input, we may not. What we do need to do is we need to provide an initial covariance estimate. We need to provide an initial estimate of the state. And let's just ignore for now the debugging for both parts. And then you can say how much further do you want to, to predict in the future. So at first, I will just run the filter through using the same values that were used for actually simulating the model. And now what we get out are the reconstructed and the predictions. We get the common gains, and we get sigmas based on the reconstruction and based on the predictions. So let's just plot again the data. And then let's add on top of that my prediction interval here. And wha what you can should be able to see is that it's very, very narrow. So it's the green lines around there. Um, if I zoom in, you won't be seeing it uh, even better because it's just so nice. Now, what I want to show you is if you do use a wrong starting guess. So what we did initially up here was to use 10,000 meters above ground and standing still. Now what we'll do is that we use 6,000 meters above ground and still standing still there. If we add that to the previous plot, you will see that, and this time let me just zoom into it, you will see that where we before started at the right place, now we start at the wrong place. We still start falling and then at some point we kind of go up and we overshoot. So why is this not behaving so nice? 
Let's just try one more thing before we start discussing it. So this time we will again start 6,000 meters above, but we will have an increase in the initial variance. What we used as initial variance before was saying that it's just zero. So we know exactly where we are when we start here at the wrong place. And that's actually the, the key to it. So if we now say that we don't know where we are, we know that we're standing still, but we don't know which height we are. Then even though we say that initially we, we assume we are down here, we actually go in the even in the first update of reconstruction, we get very close to the true value and within five time steps we are pretty much overlapping with the initial green line that we made with the optimal values. So basically what have we learned? It doesn't matter so much if you start the wrong place as long as the uncertainty that you add to that estimate is adequate. We can make many more examples of this, but the key point is you should not say that you're somewhere if you're not you don't know you're there. Now the other part is what happens if you are missing observations? So what I will do is I will remove a lot of observations. So where we before had values at every point in time, then I've removed many of them. Effectively I've removed. So if I now run the common filter true again, we again have all these things. We have some reconstruction that we could not make in the beginning because we did not have any uh, observations there, but all those things we can deal with. Let's just plot what we observed. So now we're down to observing only those red dots there. And if we now add our predictions along that, then it actually looks quite good, almost as good as before. If we go back to the previous plot, is a little bit wider than before, but the uncertainty, so the uncertainty is a little bit greater, but it's very, very close to what it was before. So why is this good? Well, that's again because we started with the right estimate of sigma, and the observation noise in this model is large compared to the system noise, so it's basically just falling, and then we're not getting much information from the predictions, but now let's try to see what if we increase sigma 1, which is the system noise in our filtering. So we take it and multiply by 100 in here to say that it seems make the variance 100 times uh, greater when we filter. And when we add it, and we can see that when we do that, when we don't, when we have a period with no observations, the uncertainty will grow, and then when we get observations, it will quickly reduce again. So that's how we are. And if we make it even greater, let's do to go to 10,000 instead. Then what we get is that you can see that it's exploding. But now, of course, I'm using it a very large value. is of course, not at all optimal, but just to show you what happens. So around Christmas time, this is very appropriate, but Right now, it's just a variance that is exploding. What we can get back to in a moment is which one is better, but let's go back and discuss a, f a few more details first. <coughs> 